One of the most common design elements you'll use over and over is holes. And the ability to create and manage a diverse set of holes is really important in CAD software. For this, Alibra Design has the hole tool, which can be found in the part tool section of the model tab. Here we have a standard block, just as an example. Let's go ahead and select the face that we'd like to put the holes on. We'll left click it, and then we'll click the hole tool. Now the first time you load the whole tool, it may take a while because it's loading a ton of data that will populate the thread section. To place a hole, we'll go ahead and left click on the face that we've chosen. In this case, we'll just make two holes. Change the view a little bit to get a better idea of what we're looking at. So on the top of the whole dialog, we can choose between different kinds of holes in terms of simple, counterboard, counterdrilled, countersunk, or tapered. The next thing we have access to, based on the choice that we've made here, is the different values for the geometry of the hole itself. Maybe for our hole, we want the depth of the counterboard to just be 0.1, and we want the diameter to be 0.4. We can see that as we modify these values, all of the holes that are within this single hole feature are going to be updated. We can also choose the length of the hole if our depth condition is set to blind, which basically means just go down whatever value this is. But we can also choose through everything or to limit geometry. And if we chose to limit geometry, for example, uh, we might select the other face as the target. And we can see that it goes through. The next thing we'll have access to is the different thread options. And you can choose none if you don't want a threaded hole or you can choose from any of the standard defaults that ships with Alibra Design. At this point, let's take a really quick detour and talk about these defaults. When you install Alibra Design, there will be a folder in the local disk, Program Data, Alibra Design, System Files, Threads, which will be called Alibra Threads. It's an Excel file, and if you double click it, the file containing all of the thread data that populates the dialogues in the whole tool in the external cosmetic thread tool will open up. We're not going to talk too much about this particular file in this video, but just keep in mind that this file does exist. You can add to it, remove from it. You can create entirely new thread series as you like. And the data found here will be used both in the 3D model and it will also be pushed into the 2D drawings. So now that we know where this data is coming from, Let's take a quick look at maybe an ISO course. In our case, why don't we choose a size of maybe five? And we can see the default type and class options that we have for this hole as defined in that Excel file. You can also define the length of the thread. And in our case, we want it to be the entire depth of the hole, but you could also define it to be a custom value uh, or one of the default numbers. Now, once we have our holes placed, we can also add dimensions to them right from within this dialog. So just click the dimension tool and you can click the center point and maybe another edge and you can type in a value. You can also dimension between nodes. So for example, we could do this. And you also have access to the constraint tools and most of the other sketching tools related to positioning. You can insert more holes by clicking on the insert hole tool and just clicking as you like. To finish out this whole feature, we'll just press OK. We can see a single whole feature has been added and this sketch will contain five nodes representing where the hole should go. If you wanted to modify a hole, you just right click its feature and select edit. We'll notice that as we make modifications, again, every single hole in this feature is going to update at the same time. So if you have multiple hole sizes and hole types, you'll need to make them in separate hole features. Once our changes have been updated, we can just press OK and we can move on with our design. Another thread related thing that you might want to do is to create an external thread. The tool for this lives in the whole dropdown and it's called external thread. Let's go ahead and click it. And now we can click on a circular edge somewhere on the model, typically an edge that kind of looks like this. And we can optionally filter the available things in these dropdowns by the size of the diameter of the edge that we've selected. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And now we can see that we have only values pretty close to the diameter available. Let's choose 0.25 and we'll press OK. Our external thread has been created. And again, if we need to modify it, we just right click it in the Design Explorer. The last thing you might want to do with threads is visually represent them in a different way. Go to the View tab 
And on the Threads dropdown, you can have Texture, which we see here, Color, or None. In this video, we've learned how to create holes and external threads. We've learned how to change the display options of threads if we're using them. And we've learned that all of the data for threads lives in an Excel file that we can modify.